G'day guys, welcome back to the game day vlogs. Massive match here at the MCG. It is the D's taking on the Fremantle Dockers. It is a top four clash. So another challenge, another puzzle to solve. I'm super excited to see how the lads tackle this. It could be defensive, two of the, the best defensive sides in the comp going at it. So really excited to see how it all pans out. Um, if we win this, it's 18 in a row and we'll go 11 and 0. So um, really keen to see how the boys approach it and hopefully we can get over the line. But I'm meeting cameraman Bailey in there. Uh, we're gonna be in the MCC and uh, yeah, we're gonna have an absolute ripper. So go Danny. Here we are at the MCG for the D's taking on the Dockers 1v4. I'm here with cameraman Bailey. How are you, Baz? Up the Dockers today, we're on the purple men. They're gonna win by 30. I don't like that. He's whipping home Freo, probably for Drews. I'm whipping home for Drews, but I'm also, I'm going against the grain. Rogers is always, he loves to get on the D's bandwagon. He loves to wear the scarf, and he always batches in. I'm the opposite, I'm going Freo today. Six goals to 30 points. It could be, it, it's up there. I can't believe I've invited this man to the MCG. Um, I probably should have invited a couple more because there's not that many here with about 15 minutes till the opening bounce. Um, Baz, what is your official tip? Frio by 28. Rory Lobb turns it on in the third to pull away. I reckon it'll be a close first half. I reckon there is a six goal gap between these football sides and I reckon the D's get it done in a real sort of suffocating manner by 36 points. And we'll go 11 and 0. You would have to be absolutely delusional to think that there's a six goal difference between Demon and Freo. Freo are uh, not even ahead. Lobb has gotten the Dockers off to an absolute flyer. It has just lived inside their forward 50 and the Dockers lead by 8 points, 139 to the D's, 0-1-1. A little bit nervous 11 minutes into the game. The Dockers have come to play. Come on, Fritter. Need the instant response here. Yes, Bailey Fritz. Go, team. Well, four seconds later, uh, Fritter kicks a snag. And just steady things here at the G. 12 minutes in to the first term. Dockers have been all over us. Another puzzle to solve. That's the interesting thing about coming to the G week in, week out. Every team throws something a little bit different at us. And it was a yeah, terrific first 10 by the Dockers. If they keep this up, this is going to be an absolute barnstormer of a contest. Tunes at the G. You know what the difference is, though? I don't like the tunes, it's Wiley. The difference is that the Ds can do that where they can not have any momentum and turn it like that, yeah, whereas you're right. a Dockers will have it but and, not, and not capitalize. And not capitalize on it. You're right. The pressure around the footy by the Dockers is pretty fierce, to be honest, and they do set up really well. They're actually a legitimate football side. I do respect them. Um, great goal by James Jordan to get on the end of that one, though. Uh, despite the pressure and despite the way the Dockers are playing, the Ds have a five point advantage. Quarter time here at the MCG, and the Ds are up by two points, but it's been all Freo to be honest. Um, they probably had more of the ball inside their 450 than we did. Uh, if the Dockers can maintain this for a fair chunk of the game, we're in for an absolute rip snorter. I know the Ds will be there when the whips are cracking, you know, late in the third quarter, still putting the heat on. It's really interesting to see whether the Dockers can do that as well, but um, ripping game so far, the footy's hot. And um, yeah, D's up by two. Hopefully we can continue it in the second term. End to end play to start this second term. Jaden Hunt bursting for a rebound 50, just breaking the lines, getting out to Petrarca. Little lob through ball to Toby Bedford, who tried to lob it, I reckon, to Benny Brown, but it's floated through for a goal. I'm probably not giving Bedford enough credit there. That is a great finish. The D's are up by eight points. Druzy called me at half time and said that Freo can sometimes turn off in the second term. Toby Bedford must have been aware of it because it's Toby Bedford's world and we're just living in it. He's kicked two to start this second term and he is on absolute fire. The small forwards have been good for the Ds. We skip out to a bit of a lead here. This is a great start to the second term. Just popped up on the scoreboard. 11 minutes into the second term that Clayton Oliver has 21 touches. 45 last week against the Roos. 21 so far in this game. That's and now we have Penny coming across. That's as many touches as I get in the season. Clayton Oliver 
Touch number 23 given to Gossie Pickett. It's a goal assist. And the days have skipped out to a 22 point margin. Start of this second term. This is some of the best days footy I've seen all year. At the minute, they're just putting it all together. They're absorbing the pressure which Freo are bringing. They're standing up. It's exciting. They predicted rain start of the week at the MCG, but not a drop in sight, but it's currently raining snags start of this second term. A little bit of rain in my eyes from uh, Freo absolutely putting my prediction to, to bed. Bailey Fridge goes bang. Dominance out of the middle, and it's out to 28 points in the blink of an eye. Is lining up for the Dockers first of the term, I reckon. And they really need this. Freo in desperate need of this one, Rory Lobb. <laughs> It is halftime here at the MCG. The D's blew the Dockers to smithereens that term. I reckon we kicked four to one. Brilliant term. Uh, we've got the gap. We've got the gap that we wanted and we needed. We lead by 25. Clary's been unbelievable. The back line's been doing well without Stephen May. And um, Bob Murphy and Ken Hinkley here are just, just a little bit worried. <laughs> The Dockers have kicked two in three minutes to start the third term. Here come the Dockers. Get on the train. Get on the purple train. Here we go, prime train. The purple train has started very strongly. Not nervous yet, but... We should be. We should be. Pretty good start by the Dockers. Bailey Fritch, it's a good side for a left footer. He is taking a kick from the impossible. Shout out, Angus. Angus, all Australian half backman, Brayshaw. Oh, get, oh, get, get, get Frida! Frida! Oh boy, what a snag! We're in need of that because the Dockers were coming. <laughs> what a kid! Dom Sheed from the boundary. Dom Sheed, if you don't mind, Bailey Fritch. Great build up end to end. Neil Bullen with a little sidestep. Little one to Bedford. He's been everywhere, Toby Bedford. Hits up Bailey Fritch who slots it. From the impossible. Dockers are fired up in the third. They've kicked another one. Lockie Schultz pinches it off Jaden Hunt and slots the snag. It's only a seven point ball game here at the MCG. The Dockers have come to play. So this is interesting. This is where the D's are genuinely getting challenged here. So it's going to be interesting to see how they finish this game. Out. Michael Frederick has sold a fair amount of candy to Trent Rivers on the mark there. And the Dockers reduce it to one point here at the MCG. The Dockers are in front here at the G. They've evaporated the four goal half time deficit. And to the back end of the third turn, they are in front by five. Oh, we, we speak about coming early. We speak about it, and, and often as males, we come <laughs> a little bit too early. I think D's have. A little bit more in them. A little bit more to give. I agree. Want. I agree. They've almost played their card a little bit here, the Dockers. But I'm also going to say the D's better sharpen up because if it continues like this, the Dockers could run away with it. We need a settle up. Cool. Walters slots a snag and the D's are down by 10. Jeepers. It is an absolute contest here at the MCG. We need the next. We desperately need the next. Jeez, what a third term by the Dockers. And the T's are down by 16 points. Very late in the third term. Uh, we almost need the siren to go to just stop this madness they have been on. And they're going forward again. Three quarter time at the MCG. And the D's who led by about 20 or 30. They're down by 17. Um, I simply didn't think the Fremantle Football Club had that third term in them. I'm sort of sort of taken aback, if I'm going to be uh, brutally honest. Baz, you tipped him at the start. You know what, that's what I said. You're not going to invite me to another game. I don't think I am. It's, uh, yeah, today I've been on. Um, <laughs> my man, my man, love has been a revelation today. <laughs> Yeah, he has been good. Track has not. No, track's been quiet. Um, Clayton Oliver was good, but he's been quiet in that last half. It's the midfield. We're just getting flogged in the middle. They were just walking it out there. I didn't know the Dockers had scintillating end-to-end -end football up their sleeve. Given how the trend of the game, it's been the Dockers all day, barring a five-minute patch in the second term. So That's the strength, though. You can have five-minute patches that just load them on. You are right. 
It's the Dockers game to lose, if I'm going to be honest. Hopefully we can come home strong, but we're staring down the barrel of our first loss of 2022. One term to go, 17 point deficit. It'll take our best to get the job done here. The Dockers have been good all day. Come on, Dees, bring it home. Come on, bring it home. Spargo's taking a clunk. An absolute hang. We need this. Like, we literally need a goal. We are down by three goals, and Spargo must kick this. Spargs. It's... Oh, it's hit the post. It's not lock our it day. In, lock it in, lock it in. It's not lock our it day. Bit of a nothing last turn. The Dockers are doing enough. We trailed by 17. We haven't really been able to break the lines all day, and I would say it's, it's done. The Dockers have done it. Michael Frederick has been unbelievable. Now down to 23 points, that is the game. It's all she wrote, 11 minutes into the last. The Ds have only played a five minute patch today. And in recent weeks, that's been enough. It hasn't been enough today, unfortunately. Okay, Collier lining up. It's been the Dockers day. It's been the Dockers day. It's just one of those days where everything the Dockers have touched has turned to gold since half time. I'm impressed with their resilience to fight back. I thought after our second term blitz that that was going to be curtains. And I wonder if some of the players thought so too. I assume not. But um, yeah, since half time, the Dockers have demolished the Melbourne Football Club. We have not got the game on our terms. We haven't stemmed the flow. We haven't got any ascendancy in the midfield. It's just been all Freo and they're just slotting them from everywhere. So the Dockers have been too good here at the MCG. Cruising to losing. <laughs> it's just a tough pill to swallow. Uh, the Dockers were just extraordinary around the football. We couldn't get our hands on the football for a long period of that game. Um, got absolutely rolled, and that is the long and short of it. We got our pants pulled down. I reckon that is the worst result since we played Port Adelaide in the season of 2020. Um, bitter pill to swallow, but you can only hope that we'll bounce back. No Langdon, May went down early, Hibbert's been out. Um, so hopefully there's some room for improvement. But I think something that really needs to improve pretty quickly is our connection forward of centre. We've lost that just, like when our forward line hums, it really hums and like, it hums better than other teams. Like we probably have not the strongest forward line in the comp, but our system when it works, makes it one of the best forward lines in the comp and that just hasn't been firing for a long time now. So, need to get back, need to get that up and about again and um, hopefully can set us back up for the rest of the season. Fair play to the Dockers though, they got the Chockies comprehensively and um, I'm gonna have a bit of a sad drive home. But once again, guys, I appreciate the support. I appreciate everyone tuning in to the vlogs and the content and I'll see you all for some more videos very, very soon.